You're listening to the Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q in the Guy. Welcome back to the Sports Coma. Big Q and the Guys, we talk to Saints, man. We just got you talking OTAs. We went off the top break. We're talking about rules. Rules, man. What role Kirk Coleman is going to play in this upcoming season? Of course, let me set the table here, DC. We know Kirk Coleman signed with the Saints. Let me see if I pull up some of the information. According to what I'm looking at from NFL.com, of course, the Saints got with him on March the 3rd. They signed Kirk Coleman, and they signed him to a three-year deal worth $18 million for the basically 6.5 of it is guaranteed in year one. Now, I say that to say that Kirk Coleman, now, of course, he spent some time with Carolina, but prior to that, he was with Philadelphia, and he registered 11 interceptions in his first two seasons as a Panther, but he didn't have none last year. He had a solid season of 70-something plus tackle, no interceptions, which is the, the diva stat for that position. But looking ahead, my, 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 my take about it, of course, you know what happened with the Minnesota Miracle. We also have young guys like Von Bell. And, of course, Von Bell led the team in tackles last year uh, for the Saints. He was a top man with 83 tackles, four and a half sacks. Von Bell doing it big. Marcus Williams, of course, was third on the team. He had 73 tackles and four interceptions. Pretty solid year for your safety, uh, rookie safety. So hence, the season changes, miracle, Minnesota Miracle happens. Sorry to throw that on you guys. Uh, but season starts. Kirk Coleman's the first big free agent to sink sign. They give him a three-year deal worth $18 million. My question to you and all those thinking fans is, would you pay a safety, a veteran safety, $18 million to play as a third safety and not start somewhere in one of those positions? So that's the question. Does, does Kirk Coleman's contract – in his position here, being he was the first person to sing, had a pretty full free agency in terms of they could have waited and got, you know, better deal from, you know, got another safety perhaps. But the Saints made it a priority to get Coleman here. Now, is that because they don't trust Marcus Williams or Ryan Bell? But we don't, this is a question that I'm going to answer and D.C. is going to answer. Of course, I'm going to let D.C. answer first. And he let him tell you who he believes, what position. Because, of course, we know the Saints play a lot of tree safety modified nickel where they throw the extra safety in there. But most of the time, they're not going to play that modified nickel. You'll see them in a 4-3. You'll see them in that three safety look. Hell, you might see them in a 3-4. You know, they, they have all that on the table. But the base defense, as it's registered, is the Saints play a 43 defense. That is the base defense. It's not a modified nickel, even though they play that because of injury. D.C., this question to you, my friend. Uh, Kirk Coleman's three-year deal, $18 million. Does he back up at the third safety spot, or does he take one of our safety's positions? If so, which one? I think neither. Um, I think it's the thing we're going to see exactly what we saw last year with Kenny Vaccaro. You're going to see a mixture of all of the above. But if I had to say one guy that was solidified, unlike what you agree upon, it would be Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams was the only guy that pretty much was in on most of the snaps. He didn't come out of the game a lot. But Von Bell still managed to lead the team in tackles, and him and Ken, him and uh, Kenny Vaccaro would flip-flop a lot. And if you look at the money aspects, uh, Kirk Coleman is a veteran. He's also Ohio State Buckeye, so that's another guy like that that we can add to our team. He understands uh, veteran leadership. He understands late-game situations. So... From what I see, he's basically going to have the role that Kenny Vaccaro had, but uh, maybe a little different. I don't know if they're going to put him on slot receivers from time to time when we're running that three safety look. Um, and maybe you can have your guy Patrick Robinson on outside and Ken Crawley sitting on the bench. So it's it's a lot that could happen. I think training camp will determine <clears throat> what goes on. But what I can tell you is Von Bell in a three safety uh, set was probably our worst defender in the slot, uh, 122.9 uh, passer rating that he allowed covering that slot position in the three safety setup. So um, Marcus Williams is pretty much considered an elite safety by a pro football focus. Um, a lot of his peers 
also said he was a really great player, and he probably was the best player drafted in the whole second round of last year's draft. So I don't really see us benching Kirk Coleman for him, and I don't really see us benching uh, Von Bell for Kirk Coleman, showing that he also put up five, uh, four and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, 78 or so touchdowns, uh, two tackles for a loss, yeah, five sacks. So it's it's very perplexing, man. Um, it's almost at this point it's just preference based, and we're all just making speculations because on paper, um, any move can be debatable. And I think the Saints are doing the opposite. They're just gonna throw everything on the wall and see what sticks. That's been the formula that's been working. So whoever outplays who is what it is. Kirk Coleman adds veteran leadership. Um, you're giving him the same amount of money, basically, that you gave Kenny McCarthy. Absolutely. Um, I hear what you're saying. But of course, you know, I always pose a different take because half <laughs> the battle is speculating. It is. <laughs> if you know when you listen to the sports coma, and we've been doing this going into three years now, when you listen to the sports coma, you know you, you're going to get no nonsense takes from us. And I'm not afraid to put it on the line. You know, I think everybody know that about me. I ain't afraid to put it on the line. Now, I put it on the line for a lot. And the, and the reason why I said it is because I got, you know, I look at things. I got a feel. I get a feel for certain things. I see what's happening. I see, you know, you pay this guy this much money at this certain position. You did that at a certain time. You know, the whole Kirk Trollman thing kind of rung a fire alarm bell for me because it was the first move the Saints made out the gate to get a man three uh, years, $18 million. Of course, you could have gave that to Kenny Vaccaro. You're absolutely right on that. But it's the fact that, remember, the most stamping play mentally was that Minnesota miracle in which Marcus Williams had a terrific season, less than that horrible play. But that was a horrible play at the worst time that prevented the team from going to the NFC Championship round where they would have beaten Philadelphia and ultimately went on to face Philly in the Super Bowl. Now, with that said, I love Marcus Williams. I think he's a fantastic talent. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he recoups from that because I've been hearing a lot of positive stuff from him. He's been working hard in the off season, but you know, you can never really tell until you get on that field, the thing starts working. If he can ever make it over such a horrible, horrendous play, I think he could. We'll see. But the bottom line is about the Kirk Coleman thing. It's the first move you made, you spent three years, $18 million on Kirk Coleman, veteran guy back there. He could take the, the Kenny Vaccaro role, which he's switching well, out. Like Kenny out. Vaccaro, the first I, guy we cut? <laughs> well, yeah. But the first guy you bring on is a safety on the back end. They after after the defense. first guy you cut was a safety. <laughs> the first guy you took was a safety, and the first guy you picked up was a uh, a safety. But that was prior to free agency even jumping off. Kirk Coleman signed that the same guy him before free agency, which showed me that there was a a a uh, I guess a need to fulfill that position as opposed to wait because the safety free agency was pretty much. You could have got a solid safety. You had Eric Reed. You had Boston, the guy from the Chargers out there. You know, you had pictures out there. Now, with that said, I know I, I, the Saints, of course, they watch these guys play. They know these guys a little closer. They you know, have an t- opportunity to study get these guys. They know them inside and out, what they're capable of doing and what they're capable of being. I think at some level, at some level, that got to play in the back of your mind about uh, Marcus Williams. Now, we know this is when Kirk Coleman comes in, does he take one of those guys' positions? You know, does he take one of their positions? Because sooner or later, you're not going to play the nickel, the, the three nickel position every down down. Sooner or later, you're going to see a base package when you only have two safeties out there. Now, my question is, which one of those two safeties is it going to be? I don't think it's going to be the same guys we had from last year, uh, Bell and uh, Marcus Williams. I think Kirk Coleman comes in there with Bell. That's just my take on it. I think that you're going to see Coleman and Bell together before you see Coleman and Williams. Now, you guys, y'all can chime in and tell me what you think. If you agree with me, you agree, agree with D.C., but I don't think the secondary is going to look, 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 look like it was last year. It's going to be a different turnover. The secondary is going to look I think Kirk Coleman comes in. He's going to look to start. Pat Robinson comes in. He's going to look to start. And I think he's going to challenge Ken Crawley. I think he's going to beat Ken Crawley. I think he's going to take Ken Crawley's position. I think Kirk Coleman is going to take uh, Marcus Williams' position. I just think that's and Brian Bell. You know, it's something it, this secondary will not look the same. That's my perspective on it. Now, as far as my D.C. had the debate of who's, which one would you 
uh, if he had to lose out to, which one would you take? Well, he would say, okay, I, I put Kirk Coleman over here, and then put Marcus Williams there and all this kind of stuff. But in the end, man, my take is Kirk Coleman and Von Bell, when they go to 4-3, that's who the guys are, that I see. You're not going to give a guy eight million, $18 million and say, well, you're going to make you the third safety. And you got basically two guys out there playing for chump change. Those guys still under rookie, basically rookie contracts. You know, young uh, first two, three-year man contracts, they're not making any money. You're going to get a guy $20 million to be your third best cornerback. So that's, that's foolishness. Not in today's NFL. They, that money is just not handed out like lollipops. Them guys are really earning that money. When you pay a guy $18 million and $20 million, you better believe they're going to have a pivotal role in the system. That's my take on it. Anyway, DC, let's get into the next uh, topic about catalyst, the top catalyst on the defense. Now, you said from the previous podcast, that the Saints have a top five defense as opposed to my, my suggestion was top ten. Now, of course, you said... Who was top already top ten? <laughs> Who was top ten last year? Who was right there? Right, so, <clears throat> so my thing is, based on all the moves that the Saints did, Davenport, the two we just talked about, Pat Robertson, Kurt Coleman, Demario Davis, you know... Then, you know, some minuscule moves as well, like you talk about Jay Bromley. Now, I don't know how Jay would play. Now, he obviously would be a welcome addition. He's a young veteran guy, big, strong guy that, that'll look really good in that, that position behind Tyler Davidson and Onyemata. But we, like you said, they're looking, we're looking at top five here. You know what? We're gonna, you know what? DC, just hold on. We're about to go into our next break right here. Got the music playing here. Anyway, we'll tackle that question on the other side of the break. He gonna tackle we gonna like call, uh, Marcus Williams? No. Oh, no. <laughs> We're gonna tackle like Brian Bell did for 83 total tackles that leave the team. Player. That's how we gonna tackle. That's how I'm gonna tackle. I'm not gonna tackle like Marcus tackles, Williams. man. Where you getting 83 All right. from? 83, I'm getting the CBS and Mark, Marcus Williams had his 73. 83, Von Bell led the team. And then we'll come back on the other side of the <laughs> I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. 